When I did a 12-part refutation of EPUC on apologetics, I thought that would be the last video I ever made dedicated to that oxygen-thieving devil. So a couple of days ago, he releases this uh, video, which really aroused my righteous indignation here. So he titles this video, OK, Free Graces, absolute proof that you have to obey Jesus or you will go to hell. That's not the bit that annoyed me. As soon as I see him put a title like that, he doesn't obey God himself. So it's really laughable that he, he even puts videos with that title because he condemns himself before he's even said anything anyway. But anyway, that's not the point. A while back, this channel called Truth Speller did some video about how false teachers push doctrines that drive people to suicide, okay? And essentially, it was about epiusia on apologetics, and so he comments on that situation in this video. So just have a look at how he introduces it. Look what he starts off saying, and then look what he's going to go on to say, and just see what a sick waste of space this guy really is. It's recently been brought to my attention that I've been shaking up some of the free gracers out there and shaking up their false counterfeit gospel. And it seems that I've been striking some fear in some of them, which is great because Psalm 19.9 says that the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Proverbs 16.6 says that by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And Proverbs 14.27 says that the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. So this is a good thing. So he starts off giving himself a bit too much credit that he's shaking up the free graces out there. Well, first of all, he, he's not shaking up the whole community. He's just one of a million other heretics that we have to deal with, okay? He's just more contemptible than other heretics because, you know, it's just the pride and the smugness with which he says stuff. But, you know, we, we don't have any problem dealing with him as we do with any other waste of space out there. But he starts off saying that he's driving fear into people and that it's a good thing. Now, pay attention to that, okay? The fear of the Lord is a good thing and he's striking fear into people supposedly. So we should expect a good outcome from this, right? Apparently, it's been striking fear into some, and in fact, so much so that it's even to the point that one guy said he had contemplated suicide because of what I preach. Now, I don't in any way condone suicide. I think it's incredibly selfish and wicked, and it's self-murder. And the Bible says that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. That's in 1 John 3.15. So this is like, again, this guy's done this before. It's like a parody where he refutes his own arguments. It's weird. But he's he's just said that the fear of the Lord is a good thing and he's striking fear and that's a good thing, right? But then in the next breath says that his video content is driving somebody to suicide. And if this, some, this person's suicidal, you know, it's wicked, it's selfish. You know, it's this terrible sin of self-murder and no murder has a... Well, hang on a minute. You just said the fear of the Lord is a good thing. Now you're saying suicide is wicked and it's your preaching that even drove him to even th contemplate suicidal thoughts. Now, just look at the victim blaming. He's going to do about a minute 40 in, okay? And ju just see what a waste of space this guy is. Listen, the reason that you're feeling like killing yourself after I preach the difficult and challenging words of Jesus and of the Bible could be because you are trying to hold on to the things of this world and also hold on to Jesus at the same time. And it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Listen, you can't stop sinning in your own power. You have to submit to doing things God's way. Surrendering everything you have and follow in Jesus's footsteps, dying to yourself. So quite clearly we have somebody who's already burdened, okay? He's obviously got a very strong burden on his heart. And all EPUC on apologetics does is just add more burden onto him when he doesn't lift a finger himself to carry it. Now, first of all, I, I want to know what part of the Bible he's quoting that says that suicide is this terrible, evil, wicked sin that, you know, the worst people do it. Or, you know, it's self-murder. Where in the Bible? Does it, if somebody knows in the Bible where it actually says that, please provide it in the comments because I can't find it anywhere. I can't find a law that says thou shalt not commit suicide. It's not mentioned when Paul talks about the sins of the flesh. He's trying to equate it with murder. Well, that's not even the biblical definition of murder for a start. So he tries to make it out like this person who's contemplating suicide is this evil, selfish person that just won't turn from all of his sins. You know, why won't you just deny yourself? Why don't you want to walk this difficult path that Jesus set before him? Well, here's something I know that that reprobate doesn't, okay? Is that that person who's contemplated suicide, I've actually spoken to him, okay? We've spoken in online meetings. I've had several meetings with him going through some of the verses that he's been struggling with. So I know the problems that he's actually been having. Now, I'm not going to name drop here, but he's a young guy, okay? He's not even an adult by some, you know, legal definitions, but, you know, he's, he's a growing young man. 
he doesn't go out and fornicate. He hasn't started drinking, okay? He doesn't go out and, you know, party with all these people. Because I've spoken to him, and he's spoken to me about the state of the country where he lives, and he tells me how everybody around him is, you know, wicked and apostate, and all the churches are terrible, and all these worldly people are doing this worldly stuff. He knows what the Bible says about that stuff. He knows that it's wicked. He knows what sin is, and he's not going around doing all of these things. So when this reprobate here says, you know, why won't you just follow, you know, turn from your sins and... How do you know he's not? You don't know him. You don't know anything about him. And I know because I've spoken to him. So because I've actually spoken to him and I know the person that he's talking about here, I know why this person was contemplating suicide. I know why this person felt like this. Okay. And it's because he looks on one set of videos and there's all these free grace people over here saying, hey, it's by faith alone. Here's my verse from Romans. And here's my verse from Ephesians. And here's my verse from this passage and that passage. And here's why it's one saved, always saved. Because, you know, Jesus said I should lose nothing. And Jesus said, none shall ever pluck me out of my hand. Okay. And then he goes on other videos, like reprobates and oxygen thieves like Epiusio and Apologetics and Y City Preachers and Jesse Morell and all those waste of space saying, Hey, you need to deny yourself, and here's our verse. And you can lose your salvation because, you know, if we sin willfully, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, and if you don't abide in me, and this, that, and the other. So he's got all this from us with all our verses, and then he's got all this from them with all their verses, and he doesn't know how to reconcile those things. That's why he's contemplated suicide, because he doesn't know how to answer all these things. He doesn't know what the truth is, and so he wants somebody to help him answer those passages and how they're even consistent with the other passages and how we would even answer them, okay? because he just, you know, feels that maybe people in the free grace community or whatever haven't answered those questions sufficiently. That's why he's been struggling. That's why he's felt so unwell and, you know, so just spiritually burdened for months on end listening to this oxygen thieving waste of space right here so you know it's not that this guy is a wicked just selfish person who's just filled with all unrighteousness and just loves his sin too much okay he wants to know the truth he wants to obey god he wants to follow the commandments he wants to turn from his sins but he doesn't feel that he does it well enough to be saved because Epiusion Apologetics is holding such a high standard that nobody can meet and even he doesn't meet himself which I'm going to get onto you know in a moment if you just bear with me so that's why this guy's struggling because he doesn't if he doesn't know how to get to heaven and he already feels condemned he doesn't want to add to his condemnation that's what he's really going through he's a man who's burdened he's a man who needs help okay and he's not going around doing all of these wicked things being attached to the world you don't know him you don't know anything about him so immediately if you want to say we have to turn from our sins and to deny self, you've already fallen short of this because you're a filthy, wicked liar. And I've already caught you lying multiple times on your channel. I've exposed your lying. You've never come back and answered those things. And if you did, you're just going to make excuses as to why you're not really sinning anyway. Because that's the kind of oxygen thief and waste of space and child of the devil that you are, Adam. You can't stop sinning in your own power. You have to submit to doing things God's way. Surrendering everything you have and follow in Jesus' footsteps, dying to yourself at the foot of the cross and saying, here I am, Lord, and coming to him in true brokenness over your sin, true humility about your state and that you're not right with God and in true repentance, laying down all your wickedness and selfishness and dying to that old man so that you can be resurrected by the power of Jesus Christ and filled with his spirit. So notice how he's got gospel message constantly is you must do this and you must do this and you must do this. Oh, by the way, it's all God's power, but you must do this and you must do this. And if you're not doing it enough, you know, you're not going to get to heaven. Now it's all by Jesus, but you must do this, but you must do this. No mention of like, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, which is what the Bible actually says. So he attacks free grace as being the false gospel. You know, we're preaching these lies. You know, we, we preach this cheap gospel, this damnable gospel. Well, the problem with that is that the Bible actually defines the gospel on our terms because I can open the Bible and see that it says salvation is a free gift in Ephesians and I can see that righteousness is free in Romans and I can see that it says it's a gift and it says it's free and Jesus describes it as an entrance but all the stuff that he said about laying yourself at the foot of the cross and denying self it's funny how often half of what he says the Bible doesn't even use that terminology it's just him making these emotionally sensational embellished statements because that's how false prophets manipulate people and even when he is quoting the Bible like denying self or you know 
crucifying the flesh or this, that and the other. He's turning something into an instruction for salvation when the Bible never even does that. He cannot show me in the Bible where it says, if you truly have brokenness, you shall be saved. He cannot show me in the Bible where it says, if thou deny thyself, thou shalt make it into heaven. There is no verse that says that, okay? He just plucks random verses about works or about facts and turns them into instructions about salvation when that's not even what it's talking about half the time. Or if you actually followed it through to its logical conclusion... Nobody obeys it. Nobody at all. Okay. And this is so easy to demonstrate. When are you going to deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow Jesus just like Jesus commands you to do in Luke 9, 23? When are you going to crucify that flesh so that you can say, it's not I who live, but Christ lives in me? So to anybody who, you know, believes in the right gospel and actually knows the Bible well, it's immediately obvious what he's doing here. He just takes one passage about denying self, and then he just takes another passage about crucifying the flesh and associates them as the same thing. Why aren't you denying yourself? Why haven't you picked up your cross? Why aren't you crucifying the flesh? Well, when the Bible talks about those two things, it's two completely different people talking about two completely different subjects. So let's just pick deny yourself as an example. So first of all, when Jesus, you know, when Jesus was telling them about denying self, he told his disciples that the Son of Man must suffer these things and be rejected of the elders and slain and raised on the third day. So he was telling his disciples about going to his death on the cross. Now, you don't get this from Luke's account. You get it from the other accounts that Peter tried to stop Jesus from doing this and Pete, uh, Jesus had to rebuke him, okay, for trying to stop this process. So that's the context of if any man will come after me, okay, he's going to be slain and raised again on the third day, right? Okay, when did Epiusio and Apologetics ever get killed on the cross? It didn't happen. He's never done. And he's not a Stephen. He hasn't been killed for the faith. So immediately he's quoting a verse that you have to do when he doesn't even do it himself. He hasn't obeyed the scripture. And he's done this multiple times on his channel. Like when he tells you that you have to pluck out your own eyes and two hands, says the guy with two eyes and two hands. That's the kind of person that he is. Or he tells you to give up everything for Jesus when he has quite a nice looking house and he goes on nice places on holiday. Which again, I'm not against, but don't go around telling everybody to, you know, give everything up when you you haven't given up everything yourself. So to give you a ca an idea of the kind of things that I've been speaking to with this person that I've been meeting online that's been contemplating these things, okay, I'm going to give you an example of some of the kind of stuff that we talk about and the reason why he's been suicidal, according to this guy. So he starts off titling a video. You see, this is the kind of thing that he's doing, right? Absolute proof. So that's a pretty strong case if you're going to put in bold absolute proof, right? Undeniable proof, absolute. You have to obey Jesus or you will go to hell. So he's going to provide his proof text on the screen, okay? So the first verse that he provides, John 1, 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay, we can see that God takes away the sin of the world. That bit I can see. Where does it say, if I don't obey, it doesn't mention the word obey, where does it mention hell? And in fact, John's gospel never mentions the word hell. Now, he does mention the condemnation, but he never mentions hell, though. So how is that a proof text that we must obey or we will go to hell if it doesn't say obey, doesn't mention my obedience, and it doesn't mention hell? That's not absolute proof. But you see, this is the kind of thing that this guy does. He just plucks and cherry picks random verses that have got absolutely nothing to do with the issue being discussed, and he makes it about, sirs, what must I do to be saved, when the Bible never even does this. And this is why my you know, brother in Christ, my friend, has been going through through all these months of worry because of the kind of seeds that this guy's been planting. And then his next two verses, so 1 Peter 2 24 and 2 Corinthians 5 15, you know, that we have we have died to sin, that we might live for righteousness, okay? Well, again, I don't know anybody in the free grace community who's arguing with this. I don't know anybody who has a problem with this. I don't know anybody who proclaims faith alone and once saved, always saved, that says, hey, right, let's go out and sin. Let's see what we can do, okay? It's constantly what we're accused of by EPUC and apologetics, but I can't find anybody saying this, all right? So, yeah, nobody's arguing that we must live for righteousness nobody's arguing you know that jesus died for us and rose again that we should live for him i don't know anybody who's arguing that but again where does that say that if i don't obey jesus i will go to hell that's not what those two verses say they do not mention the subject but he's making it say that he's falsely equating that with what it means and so then, like his father Satan, you know, when Satan had to quote scripture to Jesus to make it completely different than what it actually meant, he just carries on doing the same thing. So he goes to Romans 6 and, you know, he takes these two verses out where it says, you know, we have, be we have been freed from sin. 
right? So he's interpreting freed from sin as you don't do sin anymore. That's how he's trying to make you think that that's what it means. But the thing is, that's not even how Paul defined it, because if we just go to Romans 6, where it says those two things, we just keep reading, we keep reading, and it still describes the body as mortal, okay? So the, the body's not living this new life. Now, he, he says that, you know, he lives on to God, so we quite clearly live. There is this new life being described, but the body's still mortal. But you see, he, he doesn't want you to pay attention to that bit. He likes to, you know, just kind of dress over that or pretend it's not really there. And he's Here's a very important verse in verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Now, what's the reason why sin shall not have dominion over you? Because you have turned from all of your sins and you don't sin. Oh, wait, that's not what it says, is it? It says, you are not under the law, but under grace. Well, what is the law? If you sin, then this will happen. That's the law. A sin is the transgression of the law. That's how the Bible defines it. So the transgression of the law shall not have dominion over you or the punishments thereof because you're not under that law. If I'm not under the law, then the law cannot punish me for transgressing it. That's what it means. But under grace, because it's grace. It's God's unmerited favour. That's what that word means. But then he just quotes that as if it's talking about something completely different. And that's what he does constantly. He does this all the time. And that's why this person was feeling suicidal. Because he constantly gets these ideas from this person where he just makes the Bible say something completely different than what the author is talking about. So we carry on with this video with this absolute proof. So his next one is about, you know, his brothers and his sisters are the ones that hear the word of God and do it, right? Well, here's the problem. He hears the word of God, but he doesn't do it though, because the word of God says, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The word of God says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What does he say? Well, he says, fall at the foot of the cross and surrender yourself and thou shalt be saved. Well, funny, because I don't even think the word surrender is even in the Bible, at least not in the King James. So if I have to surrender myself and that's what I have to do, well, that's not the words that Jesus said. So you hear the word of God, but you don't do it because you just give this emotional lip service about falling on our knees and that's your gospel when that's not even what Jesus said. You have a different gospel because you use different words than the words that Jesus used. So, you know, it's so funny when he attacks free grace as perverting the gospel and having a cheap gospel okay when the bible defines the gospel on our terms because we say hey it's by faith and the bible says it's by faith and we say it's not of works and the bible says it's not of works and we say it's whosoever believeth and the bible says whosoever believeth and when the bible does say you know do some works or do this and do that and the other it's funny how words like salvation and not in those same verses. And it's funny how the word eternal life is not in those same verses. And the, the closest things that they find, they have to reword it and, and sort of manipulate you into thinking it says something else. Like when the Bible says, you know, work out your own salvation. Well, it doesn't say work for your salvation. It says work out. But, you know, he manipulates you into thinking that it means work for your salvation. And then it's just more of this irrelevant quote mining, like, you know, you are no longer strangers and foreigners and citizens, etc. We have an opportunity to do good, good you know, to those. That are, OK, fine. Yeah, we all agree with those verses. Nobody is arguing against these verses. But what the freak does that have to do with absolute proof that you have to obey Jesus to go to hell? Once again, these are not proof texts of what you're talking about. It doesn't make any sense. You're quoting the wrong verses. And this is why somebody's contemplating suicide by watching your stupid videos. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out that, like, the way that this guy perverts the Bible and manipulates people. Okay, because if, if we in the free grace who believe in one saved, always saved, we'll bring out a verse, you know, you, you know where we're going to go, right? Like, you know, uh, I give unto them eternal life and no man shall ever pluck them out of my hand, right? Jesus says, I should lose nothing. I shall not let any be plucked out. So then he has to take a, well, okay he's not gonna let you go and he's not gonna lose you okay fine but you can walk away though and then in another video he'll say oh john 15 says we can lose our salvation because the father cuts off the branches well hang on a minute i thought it was me walking away i thought god didn't lose me now it's the father cutting me off so you see how they change the rules when it suits them they just change the rules as they go you know it's a bit like when you talk to the jehovah's witnesses and you catch them out on something and they just make some random crap up on the spot you know they, they, you can just tell it's a made-up answer right there that's exactly what he does he just makes up his answers when it suits him or you know when he uses hebrew 6 as his strong proof text that 
that you can lose your salvation. And then it says, oh, by the way, did I mention it's impossible for you to be renewed onto repentance? So then he has to come up with some weird, long-winded explanation as to why that doesn't really mean what it says. And actually, no, you can get your salvation back. He changes the rules because that's how his gospel operates. And he calls free grace the cheap gospel. Well, that's funny that because the Bible says that the gospel is free. Eternal life is a free gift. Righteousness is a free gift. It costs Jesus everything and it's given to me for free. So what's cheap is your filthy 50 cents works being added to the gospel. You going around pretending that you've turned from all of your sins and you've crucified the flesh. You haven't crucified the flesh. I've catched you sinning loads of times on your channel. Like when the Bible says in Revelation 20 that it's the dead who are judged according to their works, not the people in the book of life. So what does he say? Oh, save Christ. Christians are going to be judged by their works according to Revelation 20. That's not what Revelation 20 says. Or when, you know, he normally quotes out of the ESV and then he's doing a piece on Revelation and then he decides to change to the King James Bible when it says, add down onto his words, because that verse actually says something different in the King James than the ESV and obviously it suits his doctrine. So he has to change the words of God and change the Bible that he uses to make a point. So he's quite happy to change the word of God when it suits him to do so. Or how about when he did a whole long piece on how Irenaeus, you know, called Marcy on the, the son of Satan or the firstborn of Satan for preaching one saved always saved didn't show any evidence on the screen no you know he didn't show the paragraphs or the quotes of what he's talking about I did when I refuted him turns out that wasn't mentioned as a subject and that's just one of many many examples where he's lied through his front teeth and he's done it in this video why don't you deny yourself how do you know they're not? You don't know these people. And look, you work salvation waste to space that follow this guy and you're just going to put in the comments and make all your excuses for him. Just because somebody gets up on the screen and says, hey, you need to deny yourself and do all these works to be saved, that doesn't mean that he does those things. Why? Because he's a hypocrite. This isn't complicated, folks. This is not difficult. This is not hard to understand. This is not difficult to comprehend. He is a hypocrite. He does not practice what he preaches. He hasn't plucked out his own eyes. He hasn't cut off his own hands. He hasn't given everything to Jesus. He hasn't denied himself because he hasn't gone to the cross with Jesus and died for his faith. And even the disciples didn't follow that through, actually. And just because somebody preaches faith alone and one saved always saved doesn't mean that we want to go around sinning and finding any excuse for it. Not at all far from it. It's just that we just believe what the Bible says that, yeah, we should turn from sin because the Bible has all these verses about turning from sin. But it also says that salvation's a free gift and it's by the obedience of one man. So we just believe both without having to pit one against the other. It's not a case of either or. And just to give you an example of how his followers don't obey Jesus either, all you have to do is scroll down, okay, find somebody in the comments. I'm going to pick on this guy, Proger Frog, because he's a waste of space that's commented on my channel before. And he's not just somebody who was a bit confused and misguided. He knows what the Bible says. So he, I'm just going to lump him in the same ilk, okay? We deny the truth that Jesus wants to take away our sin. Well, the problem is when they say take away sin, they don't. They predominantly think that means turn from doing wrong. But you know what? The Bible also tells us to do good. And the Bible says, I think it's James 4, 17, if you know to do good and you don't do it, to you it's sin. So he knows the Bible well enough to know that it says that, right? Well, that means that he also knows the Bible well enough that Jesus said, preach the gospel to every creature. So I'm just going to right click on his channel, open that in another tab. And I'm going to see that his channel has existed since 2012. So it's been around for over 10 years now. Uh, there's not even a video tab. Why? Because this channel doesn't have any content. Zero videos about the gospel. His bone idol, slothful, wicked faith has done nothing for the kingdom of God in 10 whole years. But he wants to tell you we have to do works and you have to turn from your sins. You haven't turned from your sins. Do some work, you slothful, idol waste of space. And do you think EPUC on apologetics warned him? Hey, look, you, you, you're preaching, the, you, you know, you believe the right thing, but you're not doing any work because your channel, you're not, you know, you're not doing enough to get people saved. You're not doing enough for the kingdom of God. No, it's like, yeah, like, you know, well done, brother. You know, all this like, you know, agreeing with him, liking him. No warning, because if you believe that we have to do works for heaven, you ought to be warning this guy, because surely in 10 years he could have found some time to, you know, do a video on the gospel. And there's loads of people like him. The amount of people on YouTube who have plenty of time to watch videos and write comments about how we need to do works, and then you click on their channel, zero content for the gospel, zero work for the kingdom of God. And when was the last time that somebody who believes in work salvation and conditional security knocked on your door and told you how to get to heaven and loved you enough to tell you how to be saved? if they're not a false Jehovah's Witness or Mormon, because I know plenty of faith alone and one saved always save people who go around doing that every week or multiple times a week. Never find these guys. They just stand on street corners screaming and nobody's listening to them, okay? So 
They don't obey it themselves. This is like a circus. Loads of people telling you to do all this stuff that they don't do themselves, and condemning a bunch of people that actually do those things as if they don't do those things. In fact, let's just have a look at another post and, and see some of these people saying, uh, you know, some of this same stuff. Amen. Having faith and not preaching the gospel equals dead faith. That That's a brilliant comment, right? Faith, if it doesn't preach the gospel, it's a dead faith. Okay, right click, open in a new tab. YouTube channel, let's see. Oh, he's got one video. Oh, it's got nothing to do with the gospel. How long has his channel existed? Oh, 10 years. He's had 10 years to preach the gospel. He's had 10 years to put a video on his channel. It even says it's a dead faith if you don't do this. Nothing. A dead faith. He condemns himself. And look, he gets a thumbs up. No warning. Hey, you need to do more for the gospel. Look, your faith is looking pretty dead, brother. He gets a thumbs up because he's, you know, tickling the ears of EPUC on apologetics. What a waste of space. Let's. Here's another one. He gives it an amen. So let's see if he's got anything. Uh... Well, there's, again, no, not very little to do with the gospel. I mean, he's got something about the mark of the beast, but I'm not really sure what that has to do with the gospel. So, again, dead faith. Let's look at somebody else. So, here's another one. Uh, you know, Noah built the ark. He was a righteous man. Let's have a look. Uh, what can't, Oh, he's done nothing. Oh, it's all playlists. He's done nothing for the kingdom of God himself. Lazy, bone idle, worthless waste of space. But he does get a thumbs up from a beauty on apologetics because at least he tickled the ears of the fancy preacher. Uh, oh, here's the Hebrew roots. I'm not even going to bother wasting my time with those weirdos. Uh, wisdom. The guy preaches wisdom. Well, let's have a look at your faith. Let's see what you... Oh, again, no videos. Doing nothing for the kingdom of God. Now, Jeremy J, he's somebody else who's commented, who I've had exchanges with before. Same thing. You know, one minute he defends somebody saying it is by faith, and then he says it is by works. Faith is dead, dead, dead. No content whatsoever on his... Uh, let's just double check, though, just to make sure. Oh, no, no content whatsoever. So I'm not falsely accusing him. Dead, worthless faith. How long is his channel? Oh, again, it's existed for nine years and he's done nothing. He still gets a thumbs up from Epi here in apologetics so if he's going to ask all these questions like why don't you just obey why don't you just work we could ask all you reprobates the same question all you oxygen thieving work salvation cursed children of the devil the same question you don't have an answer and when i confront you about it you just make up some you don't know what kind of a life i live yeah well you don't know what kind of life we live but you still go around saying why won't we deny ourselves you don't know anything about most of us and you know what, when he goes out and, you know, he, he, th he thinks that when we call him a Pharisee and we call him a child of Satan and I call him an oxygen thieving waste of space, he thinks that he's been persecuted and taken a stand for Jesus. Well, let's see what kind of things they were accusing Paul of saying, okay? Because remember, if Paul was preaching this sinless perfectionism righteousness, people should have been accu accusing him of being a Pharisee and this, that and the other. Let's just have a look what people accused Paul of doing. And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. So apparently people didn't accuse Paul of being a Pharisee or, you know, something like that, or a legalist. They accused him of saying, let's go out and do evil. Let's go out and do sin. That's exactly what Epiusio and Apologetics does to the free grace community. And what does Paul say about them? Their damnation is just. They slanderously report. So this proves right here that he is a waste of space, he is a complete oxygen thief, he's a servant of Satan, okay, and he wants to go accusing my friend of being wicked for wanting to contemplate suicide from listening to his commentary. I submit to you that Epiusio and Apologetics is in sin by not committing suicide. He should do a Jonah and tell people to throw him off the boat so that they don't get judged like in Jonah chapter 1. Because, you know, suicide is so terrible that Jonah told them to throw him off the boat and they didn't even want to do it because they thought it might be murder. You know. <laughs> so, you know, just to top this off and to just show what a spiritual molester this guy is, that he offends children spiritually. Like, you know, Jesus said it would be better if he was drowning in the bottom of the ocean. All you have to do is you just look through the Bible time and time again, and we see that, you know, the gift of God, salvation, it's a free gift, it's by grace, it's unmerited, it's a gift. So, you know, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is just one of the most commonly quoted ones, but there's more verses than that. We could go to John 4, 10, the gift of God, the living water. You go to Romans 5, and it says over and over again, free gift, the grace of God, it's a gift by grace, free gift, abundance of grace, gift of righteousness righteousness of the one free gift the justification onto life and it's obviously eternal life you go to Romans 6 the gift of God is eternal life you see how the word eternal life or salvation or righteousness is always coupled with the gift here you see how that keeps coming up it's free it's a gift you go to Revelation 22 and it says take of the water of life freely it's free it's a gift 
What's his answer? Well, he does a video where he takes a passage from 1 Corinthians 9 about running the race. And he applies that to salvation. Well, in that chapter, Paul's not even talking about his own salvation. He's not even talking about how to be saved. He's just giving the gospel to other people. And, you know, he takes wages from the Corinthians to support that ministry. That's what he's talking about. So that's the context of being a castaway or disqualified, as the ESV says, in that last verse there. But he takes something that's about something completely different, nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is a gift. That's what the Bible says. He takes something that's talking about a prize and he says run for the prize, even though the Bible said that salvation is a gift. It didn't say it was a prize. A gift and a prize are not the same thing. And just see the absurdity of showing this passage to say that you have to work for your salvation. You have to work for that eternal life. You have to run the race for that thing at the end. Paul says here, only one person receives the prize. So how many people are in the race? Does everybody in the race work? Yeah. Does everybody in the race do the run? Yeah. Is the winner even the hardest working person? Not necessarily. They just have to win that one race. Doesn't mean they did as much practice or training, though. Only one receives the prize. So are we going to be like the Jehovah's Witnesses now that only the 144,000 get to be in heaven and nobody else does because, you know, it's this prize at the end? What is he talking about? And so when you take a passage that's got nothing to do with getting your eternal life and you tell people that's what you have to be do, do to be saved, that's why people watch your content and they feel suicidal, okay, because of this crap right here. And so, you know, you see how he just talks out of both sides of his mouth. Well, it is a free gift, but, you know, let me explain why it's not a free gift. Well, you have to be free from sin, which means you won't sin anymore. But by the way, your free will means you can sin and lose your salvation, even though you're supposed to be free from sin and a new creature for some reason. I know. You figure that out, how that even works. I don't know, folks. So he can give us all this spiel about how we need to turn from our sins and walk the path. And why aren't you free graces denying yourself? Folks, he's going to march into hell long before any paedophiles or murderers because when Satan's cast into the lake of fire, he's cast in with the false prophet. It's the false prophet that goes in first with Satan, okay? So the person who knows what the Bible says and knows that the Bible says it's a free gift but then tells you it's actually a prize that you have to run for, he knows what the Bible says and he says this instead. He's under way more condemnation than the murderer who doesn't know Jesus. He's under way more condemnation than the paedophile who doesn't know Jesus. He's under way more condemnation than the rapist and the he is filthier than any dirty whore and the person who knows what the bible says it's a free gift it's whosoever believe and he says that it's a prize and it's whosoever surrender he's under way more condemnation because he's a filthy wicked dirty disgusting liar and he's going to split hell wide open and really, I could go on forever about that subject. Like his, his friend, Why City Preachers. Jesus says, I shall lose nothing regarding eternal life. He takes some verse out of John 17 about Judas being lost and say, oh, look, Jesus lost Judas. Even though it doesn't say that Jesus lost Judas, just says that Judas is lost. They make Jesus a failure. They blaspheme Jesus. They hear the word, but they don't obey it. They want to quote you that, you know, you're not obeying the word, but they hear the word, they don't obey it. Because if they obeyed the word, they would preach that same word. But their words aren't lining up with the words of Jesus, are they? Free gift. Jesus, prize him. That's not talking about salvation, though, is it there, folks? And so, you know, he's abusing spiritual children, you know, God's children, making them suicidal. Jesus said it would be better if Epiusi on apologetics was drowning in the bottom of the ocean with a millstone around his neck. That's not being me being mean. That's what Jesus says. Hebrews 6 is one of the clearest passages in Scripture that refutes eternal security. <laughs> <laughs> there are many false teachers out there teaching that repentance does not mean turning from sins. <laughs> And then it was like, all of a sudden, I had this revelation, and God spoke to me. <laughs> this is a dangerous false teacher. He's a ravenous wolf. <laughs> A person is justified by 
works. Funniest thing I've seen in ages. Ha 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 